Hi, I'm WTOP film critic Jason Fraley, and for the entire month of August, we're ranking my favorite movies in every genre. 30 genres over 30 days, and today we're breaking down my favorite romances. Now, there are a ton of classic romances that have to make the list, and First of all, with the disclaimer, if you don't see it on this list, stay tuned tomorrow. They're probably in romantic comedies. Or go back and check our epics list because that's where a lot of the epic romances like Titanic and Dr. Zhivago and Gone with the Wind, those great sweeping ones, we put in epics. This uh, I sort of kept with more of the, the two-hour movies, <laughs> not the big epics, but uh, those romances that you can sit down, you know, maybe with a, a tissue or two and uh, enjoy uh, maybe with on, on a date night on the couch with a bottle of wine, that kind of a thing. Um, so we get classics like Wuthering Heights, the great William Wyler movie, or Brief Encounter, the David Lean. You know, he did so many of those sweeping epics like Dr. Zhivago, but this showed he could make a really small, intimate uh, one in 1945. We get A Place in the Sun, which you could... One of my favorites, George Stevens, you could, I guess you could argue maybe it's a thriller or even a noir, um, but it has a great, I put it here because it has that great love triangle between uh, Monty Cliff, Liz Taylor, and um, Shelley Winters with that great, great uh, Franz Waxman score. I love this movie and that big close-up kiss. Uh, we get John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara in The Quiet Man, which is our Joan Jones' favorite, not just favorite romance, it's her favorite movie of all time with that big spinning kiss that they show on TV in E.T. when they're dissecting the frogs. Remember that? That's from The Quiet Man. And that red hair of Maureen O'Hara is, ah, oh, it's just good stuff in Technicolor. Um, we also get the before, uh, no, we also get uh, An Affair to Remember, um, a classic one. Um, it was Remade three times the idea of um, two lovers who meet and then agree to meet on top of the Empire State, State, State Building. Um, we, saw, we saw that with um, uh, Sleepless in Seattle, of course, but it was originally Love Affair in 1939. But this is the best one, Cary Grant, Deborah Carr, with that great song, um, uh, the, uh, An Affair to Remember. And then Harold and Maude, um, a, a, a bizarre romance uh, between like an 80 or 90 year old Ruth Gordon, who uh, of course we know from Rosemary's Baby, but here she's Maude. And then Harold, who's Bud Court, who is, you know, in his late teens. But the the romance that develops between them, Hal Ashby, definitely weird. I mean, we're talking 1971, the whole Cat Stevens soundtrack. This was that late 60s, you know, flower child era. So, of course, they're going into some weird topics similar to The Graduate. Um, but, man, if you look at it, it's just a sweet, sweet romance between these two kooky people. Other classics from the 70s, love story, you know? Um, love means never having to say you're sorry. Um, maybe that's kind of idealistic and, and lame, but the movie itself, the way it's directed, uh, Arthur Hiller, check it out, um, with that great score. Um, it's kind of soapy, but 1970, I think it invented a lot of the genre, so I put it higher than you might think. And then, of course, The Way We Were, Sidney Pollock. Um, with, um, again, a little sappy, uh, with uh, Barbara Streisand and Robert Redford. She's singing memories of the way we were. But there's some juicy nuggets even in the song. You know, what's pa too painful to remember, we simply choose to forget. And it's the laughter we remember whenever we remember the way we were. Who hasn't gotten out of a breakup? And somehow you, you forget about the stuff of all the fights and why you broke up, and you just remember the good stuff. And when she puts her hand on Hubble's face at the end, Come on, you're tearing up, admit it. All right, so those were the classics, but which modern romances make it? Um, ask any girl, or guy for that matter, Nicholas Sparks, The Notebook, you know they're gonna say it. You know, a lot of you might hate it, but a lot, and some of you, it's the greatest romance ever, Ellie and Noah, come on, you know? Um, them kissing in the rain, um, Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams, um, come on, it's just, it, I think it's pretty instantly iconic stuff uh, for our generation, but what really makes it is is their parents, uh, or not their parents, but the, the, them as older people. It, you know, we see them as young, uh, Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling, but them as older ones with James Garner and um, Gina Rollins um, just sort of you know dying in each other's arms it's it's come on you if you're if you're at all sap you'll be crying and it's directed by Gina Rollins um, son that she had with John Cassavetes Nick Cassavetes so cool family story there behind the scenes um, we also get movies like Dirty Dancing nobody puts baby in the corner <laughs> Jennifer Gray and Patrick Swayze doing the lift we all had the time of our life watching that and then one that might not make a lot of romance lists a lot of people put it in westerns or dramas 
Brokeback Mountain, Ang Lee's masterpiece. But to me, it's actually a romance. Think about it. Just because it's two, you know, same sex cowboys doesn't make it less of a romance. And if you think it shouldn't be on there, I think that says more about you than the movie. Um, Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal are so good in this. Um, right? Movies are all about conflict, right? And so the idea of these passions that that society isn't going to allow them, but they fall for each other anyway. And you know, Gyllenhaal saying, you know, um, I wish I knew how to quit you. That is, you know, that is conflict drama 101, and it's an ultimate romance. And the more I return to this, um, I think about Anne Hathaway and Michelle Williams as the wives. You know, they suspect it, but they don't know. Their husbands keep leaving to go on these camping and fishing trips. They even leave a note in the tackle box, and then they come home and he doesn't even reference it, showing that he never opened the tackle box. Movies are all about drama and, and romance in this case, and man, if if you're not a little emotional at the end of this, again, I think it says more about you than the movie. Brokeback is so amazingly directed. Um, and I'm saying that as a straight man. I think, I, I mean, come on, it's such a great movie. Um, so that had to go in the top 10, high up. Um, we also have Remains of the Day, um, you know, those great Merchant Ivory period pieces. There were so many good ones to me. That's the cream of the crop with Anthony Hopkins. Uh, we also get uh, Link Ladder's The Before Trilogy. Um, where Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy, you know, before sunrise, before sunset, and before midnight. It's really, it subverts conventions. They're just walking and talking around Europe. No big deal. They're walking and talking. And then eight years later, we get the sequel. And the next year, we get eight years later, we get another sequel. And we just check in on this adorable flowering romance. I love those movies. We get Shakespeare in Love. Again, harder to look at because, you know, you see executive produced by Harvey Weinstein. Hard to get over that, but let's not take away from the screenwriter. One of the most imaginative screenplays I've ever written, and yes, it gets a lot of flack for beating Saving Private Ryan, which it should never have done. It'll always show up on the list of the horrible Oscar upsets, but it's still a pretty good movie. It's got to make your romance list. Um, In the Mood for Love, Wang Kar Wai. I don't know if you've seen this, but such great cinematography here. Um, and one of the, I think, masterpieces of Asian cinema. Um, I think it came out in the year 2000, and it's this... It's these neighbors who, each of them suspect that their spouse is cheating. So they start to bond, you know, talking that over, like, can you believe it? Can you believe it? But the whole time they're growing close to each other. They want to have romance, but they'd be hypocrites if they had an affair, right? So it's this so trying to stay platonic, yet they're falling for each other. It's so beautiful and heartbreaking. And speaking of heartbreaking, the one that gets me, maybe for personal reasons because of who I watched it with originally, but anyway, we're wearing our hearts on our sleeves here, baby. Bridges of Madison County. Um, Clint Eastwood directed this in the mid 90s. You know, he had such a reputation for, you know, either dirty, hairy crime police or, or those Westerns, good and the bad and the ugly. Um, but man, this showed his soft side. And of course, not only him on screen as, you know, the traveling photographer, uh, Thomas Kincaid photographing the bridges, but Meryl Streep, come on, we're going to say this so many times throughout <laughs> this, but she's just the greatest actress of all time. Calling it now. Sorry, Catherine Hepburn. She's the greatest. And in here, you know, her husband's out of town. She strikes up this affair with, um, you know, with Clint Eastwood's traveling photographer and just the romance they have. And she knows she can't, she knows the husband's coming home. It's sort of that Friday to Sunday weekend romance. Um, and, but he comes up and says in the kitchen, you know, this kind of love only comes once in a lifetime. And, but she has to make that choice. The cus- husband comes home. They're in the car. The, what, what, what really has me bawling like a baby at the end, her and her husband are in the car driving into town and Clint Eastwood is, is right in front of them, um, in his pickup truck with the necklace dangling that she knows she recognizes recognizes the truck from the rearview mirror. Um, they're stopped at a red light. The light changes, but he just sits there. He sits there. And is he going to pull away? Her hand, Meryl's hand, starts to reach for the, the doorknob to get out of the car and run off into her lover's arms. And then Eastwood pulls away. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm bawling like a baby every time. Bridges of Madison County, one of my favorite modern uh, romances. Clearly you saw the passion that I have for all those movies, man. There's some of the heart tuggers of all time, the weepers, the romances. Um, But to me, the top three. I snuck in, call it a swerve if you want, I snuck in a newer one that has sci-fi elements, but in the end it's such a romance. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yes, I'm putting it in my top three. Call me crazy, but I think it's better than a lot of the movies I just named. Charlie Kaufman, the screenwriter. Michelle Gondry, the director. Um, Gondry directs it crazy. Like, characters will be, they'll leave the screen, and then suddenly, without cutting, they'll show up over here again. It's almost like, what trapdoor did he make? You know, he used, he came from directing music videos, but just the way, look at the way he does with some of those long takes. It's pretty crazy. Or some of the, the, 
force perspective where, you know, they're, they're sitting under at the childhood table in sort of the fantasy world, but she's way smaller and way bigger. It's just crazy, some of the directing stuff. But it's all about the, about the imaginative script here. Charlie Kaufman had wrote, he'd written um, Being John Malkovich and Adaptation. But this was his next one, and this, to me, was his, this is his masterpiece of screenwriting. Um, the whole idea of, we have Kate Winslet and Jim Carrey showing his serious side. I mean, other than Truman Show, this was his first serious side, you know, where we'd seen him in The Mask and Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber and Liar Liar, all those movies. But this, he showed his serious side. And the idea that, through a little sci-fi, that these two lovers, heartbroken, so heartbroken, that they have to erase the memory of the romance from their minds through a little, you know, brainwash. But while they're un while they're under the hood, um, we actually go in their minds and see the fantasy stuff and their memories. They're running away from their memories that are getting erased. But then the really cool thing is once they've already had it erased. They have a chance encounter on the train and slowly fa start to fall for each other again, leading to the great, one of my favorite romantic endings ever in a movie. We won't spoil it, but check it out. I love Eternal Sunshine. Number two, um, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, it's just one of the most iconic romances of all time. Um, yeah, it feels a little weird putting that above Eternal Sunshine. Eternal Sunshine is a little, definitely a little more daring, flashy filmmaking. But if you want some classic Technicolor romance, uh, Audrey Hepburn, never better, um, as Holly Golightly in New York City. Um, you know, of course, the big opening, you know, to the to the theme, uh, Moon River, Henry, Henry Mancini, either in instrumental form or when Audrey sings it with her guitar to George Peppard is her lover in this. Um, but to me, yes, there's all the pop culture moments that inspired so many songs. I mean, yeah, I said, what about Breakfast at Tiffany? She said, I think I remember the film. I Yes, this is the film. Um, it's so good, and I think it's almost underrated. It's sappy. Yes, it has the big embrace in the end. You know, so many romances are when the lovers don't end together. So I wanted to put one high that said, you know, that says... Who says there are no happy endings? She jumps out in the rain. She jumps out of the cab. Um, he does his big speech where he's like, you know, you're living on an island to yourself, and you keep coming back, and th that cage is constructed yourself, and he gets out of the cab. She runs after the cat in the rain, and they kiss in the rain. The moon river swells. Who says there's no happy endings? Uh, but I think there's more going directorial than you think. Uh, Blake Edwards, look, there's the, that's, that scene where um, there's some, like, uh, it's like blinds that she has um, where in her, in her apartment, uh, Audrey Hepburn standing behind these vertical blinds. She's in that cage and George Fidpard isn't and that ties into his speech in the cab. There's a lot more going on with Blake Edwards. Yeah, we get the Mickey Rooney horribly racist um, Asian neighbor, which to me, God, that takes major points off the movie. It's so dated. Um, but in terms of a romance, if we can try to get over that, again, messy film history, a lot has changed for the better. But to me, it's one of the great romances. I wanted a, a happy ending because number one, it's a bittersweet ending where they don't end up together. Casablanca, come on, it's the default pick because it's the right pick. The greatest movie romance of all time it has the war intrigue, but um, it's just great. You get Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman um, saying the great, I mean, what were these screenwriters? They were on crack. What, are they, they're, what Wheaties did they eat for breakfast that day? Because most movies would kill to have one famous line. This had about five, six, or seven. I mean, we have, here's looking at you, kid. We'll always have Paris. Um, play it, Sam. Not play it again, Sam. Misquoted a lot. Um, of all the gin joints in all the town and all the world, she walks into mine. Uh, round up the usual suspects. It's just so much. Um, of course, the song, As Time Goes By, you know, the world will always welcome lovers as time goes by. I will always welcome this movie. Claude Rains, uh, we get uh, Conrad Veidt as Major Strasser, um, just so many. Peter Lorre, Sidney Greenstreet, it's just stacked. My favorite scene is the dueling national anthems where we have the Germans singing their song and uh, Paul Heinrich as Victor Laszlo wants to strike up the band and play the French resistance theme. He looks to Bogart for permission and all he does is that he gives that nod, and then they sing it, and they're so teary-eyed singing it. Um, that'll make me tear up every time. Um, but, man, it's the romance in this that comes back. And look at it. Um, yes, the script's great. AFI, or the WGA voted the best written script of all time. I agree. Um, but, man, what, what, it, what really gives this one the push is that it's the symbolic layers. We were in World War II, we didn't know who was gonna win. The Nazis could have won and darkness could have ruled the world. Uh, out comes the script, 1942, Casablanca. Um, fighting for what's right. And Rick's character, Bogart's character, Rick Blaine, 
is, go back and look at it, he doesn't stick his neck out for anybody. He is an embodiment, he's symbolic allegory for America's involvement in World War II. He doesn't, starts off not wanting to get involved. You know, he's, he's tangentially involved. He's watching it all happen at his club. He doesn't want to get involved in the war. You know, Winston Churchill's fighting Hitler. Um, but America's over here, FDR's on the sidelines. And then, he, he, in the end, what is that line? Americans, you can, Churchill said you can count on America to do the right thing after they exhausted all other options. Um, and uh, Bogart in this, it's, he's the embodiment of that. And in the end, what makes it a great romance is he ultimately has to choose between his heart, which is, Bo, which is Bergman, um, Ilsa, and Rick. They're the greatest star-crossed lovers. But in the end, on that tarmac, he says, if I, if I stay here, we're going to regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. Because he chooses what's right for humanity, for mankind. America chooses to get involved in World War II, if you want to continue the analogy. And as they walk off with that great line, you know, Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Um, they didn't know whether America and, and the Allies would win World War II. It was still very much in question. And to me, just the guts of doing that then during the war, when the the outcome was uncertain. It's just not only one of the great romances, but one of the great movies ever made. And of course, with Rick and Ilsa, as the world will always welcome lovers as time goes by. Casablanca, number one romance of all time. See my full top 25 romances on WTOP.com's entertainment page. Join the blog and let us know what you thought. And tune in tomorrow as we break down the greatest romantic comedies.